low galactic family. There is a misperception that in the ascension, human needs and desires are no longer important. That there is a withdrawal from the question of materiality. What is not true? But the truth is that, like the human who is most connected to his soul, he is not worrying so much about the things he needs and desires because everything is there for him in a fluid and synchronized way. The incarnate master has no needs or desires, but everything is simply there, money, health, resources, friends, so is this just a natural part of our ascension, or are we talking about some unanswerable transcendental paradox that makes you want to throw some bricks at an ashram? Well, the concept is not really new, because that is already our experience concerning many things in our physical existence. If you take a look at your life, I'm sure you can tell many such experiences. There are things in your life that you do not think about much. Things that you can take for granted, that you enjoy daily. You may find that your life is crumbling on many levels, but in reality there are places where things are really working out very well for you. Because if they were not, you would not be here. And those things that seem to come easily, happen like this because you are not worrying about them, or even thinking about them a lot. In other words, you are not resisting having them in your life. If we resist our divine right to experience abundance and joy, then we will not experience much of it. At the same time, in this integration process, we are seeing things crumbling. What this ascensional process is doing is highlighting the areas of our lives that are no longer working well for us. It's pulling us back from the old energy patterns, so that these things can get back to balance. But in a new way. And again, it is not about changing our human part. It is just to allow this new Christ consciousness to do what it needs to do in our lives and in our bodies. The human mind, though beautiful in many ways and though it serves us in many ways, has become a prison for the human personality. And although the human being desperately wants to leave his prison, he continues to try to do so through the mind. Trying to think his way through enlightenment. Let's face it, if this worked, everyone would be enlightened already. Just read the manual or write the program itself step by step and voila. Illuminated. But it is not about eradicating the mind, either. It is about understanding that the mind is conditioned and limited. Most people on the planet would not be able to relate to such a concept. And this is because the mind has been held in the highest esteem as the core of our being. We were hypnotized to believe that we are our mind. Nothing could be further from the truth. But at the same time, it is about accepting the mind as it is, and also feeling the other part, the expansive and eternal part. And, truly, the part that is eternal, is the part that is real. The multidimensional self. To be here as our soul, living through these human, physical vessels, is the most evolved thing any soul can do. Because? Because the soul is in this visceral environment, close and personal with itself. He begins to experience his own essence in space and real time. Can work with galactic issues in a slower environment. Questions that were present even before the beginning of time. They stopped being students. If you feel connected to the material on this blog and feel that you are leaving behind your old story, you are one of those who are at the forefront of these changes. You could say they are masters in training. Not a student. Not a disciple. They are not in the process of being processed. You are leaving the search stage. The stage of the course. You are realizing that as you view yourself as a student you will have endless lessons and questions. As long as you see yourself on a long journey, you will continue on the path, never reaching your destination.
Not that the journey is not fun, but it can also be a safety zone, a zone of comfort. In this way, we do not have to take ownership of our place as masters. And being a student can be fun too. I remember when I was in college, and I was so excited about learning, being a student and doing things that students do. Go to interesting classes, study, absorb the atmosphere of college, meet new people. Some people are eternal students, always taking courses, and you need to know if they are just putting off the inevitable, being in the real world, out there. Navigating on their own, not being able to rely on a teacher to facilitate their responses, but ultimately thinking for themselves. For many of us, the training wheel is over. We are now on our own. We are beginning to recognize who we really are. That we have all the answers. That we are creating them as we go along. That no one, out there, no matter how wise, can tell us about the experience of enlightenment. That we must feel it, not conceptualize it. We have to try it. But, returning to human needs and desires. It is really about being in the moment, feeling the rapture of our soul self, and though our human mind comes with its concerns, it is allowing the presence of our soul to bring us wisdom and solutions. Things can also fall apart in areas that are not working for us. However, it is no longer to give this much of our attention. And an interesting thing happens. It begins to seem to us and to others as if we no longer care about our health problems, or how we are going to sustain ourselves when our resources run out. We are not so worried about fixing anything anymore. Plan or set goals. To our mind, it seems very irresponsible. But, you notice, over time, that even the mind begins to experience a sense of relief. He is no longer responsible for what he cannot really do. What is happening, as masters in training, is that we are paying less attention to the anxieties and worries of our mind and delighting in the feelings of our eternal self, which feels no anxiety or concern, but rather the sensations of being rather unconcerned. This is how trust is built. And as far as human needs and desires are concerned, the master has plenty of insight. He or she enjoys a huge range of earthly pleasures, and really tastes very expensive, not that simple pleasures are not pleasant. But one really likes them as in high style. So there is no desperation to need anything, because as masters, we know it is or will be for us. And without the sense of need, it can come to us freely and easily. Enlightenment does not refer to being in misery, for example, to prove that we are not allowing this to reduce our joy or our light. The master does not need to walk on embers or shards of glass to prove something to himself or to anyone else. It is quite clear about not allowing anyone or anything in your experience to be filled with joy. You do not feel pain or suffering. And this is so if the human allows this process. Because, if left to the human and the human mind, such ease and even luxury in life will not be allowed. The human tries to create joy by working hard and striving. But now, in the new energy, the human who is the training master, cannot seem to get away with it. Because it seems that any action taken from the place of despair or failure, fails. That's the good news. Things that worked before are simply not working anymore. So the mind initially becomes more desperate. Survival issues are triggered like never before. And the main point of this embodied enlightenment is actually getting out of the mind and entering into the sensual pleasures of being here in the physical. To explore life through the soul. Yes, trust issues arise. But, as I said, we are moving away from the questioning of our program and moving more and more to the part of the permission and experience. 
enlightenment is about accepting our human self and allowing our eternal self to experience its joy through us. And in this dynamic relationship, things are taken care of and aligned. It requires from us what seems impossible at times. And this is because we are the first through the vortex, going from the mind, which is our reality, to allow us to experience what is eternally real, our soul.